is going on y'all fast sports talk back at it with another video talking some nfl and here to talk about the chicago bears and we are going to answer the question right above me which is are the bears the worst team in the nfl in 2022 the reason we're asking this question is because the national media just continues to hammer the bears and say they're the worst team in football on paper with the lack of talent they have so you know what i said let me put it to the test so what I'm going to do in this video on the whiteboard, I'll break it down for you guys in an objective way, lay out all of the teams in the NFL that are expected to be the worst teams, compare their talent to the Bears, and finally at the end, tell you if the Bears are in fact the worst team in football, like the national media says. So with that being said, if you are new to the channel, hit the big red subscribe button down below. Make sure you're following me on all my social media platforms. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. I'm going to break it down for you guys. So as you can see on the whiteboard behind me, I've got all of the projected worst teams for this upcoming season listed here. And then I've got all of the different skill positions and then the O-line and the defense as well. So quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end, O-line, and defense. And these teams, you might have been wondering, where did I get these teams from? I'm just going ahead and taking a look at the teams that are projected for the lowest win total over under as per Vegas, right? This is not me. This is what Vegas is saying. So I put them here in no particular order. I just put them there. So we're going to go ahead and compare the Chicago Bears with all of these teams and take a look at every single position, quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end, offensive line, and defense, and rank each team with the Bears. And at the end, we are going to see if the Chicago Bears are, in fact, the worst team in football, like the national media says, if they have the worst talent, we're going to go ahead and see. So how this is going to work is basically there's, what, eight teams here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight teams here. And I'm going to go ahead and go through every single position and give every team a number for that position. So if you get the number one, that means you have the top quarterback, for instance, at that position compared to the rest of these teams. Same thing with running back. You've got the top running back core as compared to the other teams. Wide receiver core, best offensive line, best defense, etc., etc. So that is how this is going to work. So let's go ahead and start with quarterback here. I promise you, you guys will get it as I go through it. All right. So who would you say from this list has the best quarterback? Now, there's a lot of unproven guys in here, right? Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, etc., but there's a lot of bad quarterbacks in here. If I were to ask you what would teams value the most right here, which quarterback, I can tell you out of everybody here, I think Justin Fields would be the guy the teams would value the most. I know he hasn't proven it yet, but I can tell you the potential is there, right? You got Justin Fields, Marcus Mariota, no shot. Drew Locke, Geno Smith, no shot. Baker Mayfield for the Panthers. Okay, Baker's solid, but his trade value is gone or I should say his value has gone down a little bit. Um, he only went for like a fifth-round pick. Lions, Jared Goff, yeah, no. Texans, uh, Davis Mills, he's okay. Had a solid rookie year. Zach Wilson with the Jets, and then Daniel Jones with the Giants, who's basically in danger of losing his job. Who would you say from this list is probably the best quarterback, would probably go for the most compensation? It would probably be Justin Fields. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and give the Bears a one there for Justin Fields. To me, they have the most valuable asset out of everybody at that position. And then a number two, even though I'm not a big fan of Zach Wilson, I'll say just based off of potential and upside, I'll say Zach Wilson at two. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and put Baker Mayfield at three. That would be, to me, in my opinion, the third best quarterback on this list. And then after that, I'm probably going Davis Mills, who was solid, underrated. Um, then I'm going Jared Goff at five, who is, you know, serviceable. And then after that, I'm probably going Daniel Jones. And then I'm going Marcus Mariota. And then I'm going Drew Locke, Geno Smith. This is the worst quarterback, you know, room in the entire, uh, in, in, on the entire list. So that's how I'd rank them. So basically, if you guys understand now, one through eight, one is the best, eight is the worst. That's how we're going to do this, all right? So running back, very, very simple. We know who the best running back from this list is. The Panthers have it. It's Christian McCaffrey. So let's give them a number one. Second best running back, I would probably say Saquon Barkley to the Giants. That is number two. Um, then I would say DeAndre Swift with the Lions. That is number three. He's the third best running back. Number four, I'll say David Montgomery. Now, here's the thing. You might be thinking I'm just rating the top running back. But again, 
that's the guy that's going to get the most value, right? There are rooms that I'm comparing here, like the Bears have uh, Khalil Herbert behind David Montgomery. You know, you've got DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. But for the most part, we're, we're lo really looking at the top guy at the position, right? So that's four. At number five, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the Jets, who have Brees Hall and Michael Carter. Uh, they do have upside. And then I'm going to go, go and say the Falcons with Cordell Patterson. And then I'm going to go ahead and say uh, the Texans. No, I'm going to go ahead and say the Seahawks at seven with uh, Rashad Penny and um, Kenneth Walker. And then I'll say the Texans with Damian Pierce at eight. So let me go ahead and, and fix that real quickly here. The Texans running back room is probably the worst in football. All right, let's move on to receiver now. So who's got the best receivers? Best receiving core out of all these teams. I will say the Seahawks with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Okay, so I'll say the Seahawks at number one. Then I will probably go ahead and say the Lions at two, folks. They've got Amon Ross St. Brown, DJ Char, Jameson Williams. Like their receiving core has been uh, upgraded. So I'm going to go ahead and say them. Then I'll probably say the Jets, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, and um, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson really got that upside there that you like. And then I will say after that, let's go with the Panthers with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. Actually, you know what? I'm going to switch the Panthers with the Jets. I'm going to go ahead and say the Panthers have a better core. And then I'll say the Jets at four. See, I'm doing it on the fly here. I'm switching it with you guys because of uh, the fact that I really do think that. All right, so here we go at number five for the receiver spot. We'll go ahead and put the Giants with Kenny Galladay with the Kadarius Tony and that, that group there. Then we'll go with the Texans with Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins and whatnot. And then I'll go ahead and say the Bears with Darnell Mooney and uh, Byron Pringle and Equinemia St. Brown. And then the worst receiving core is the Falcons, who have just got Drake London and nothing else really. And Drake London hasn't proven anything yet. He's a rookie. All right, so there we go with wide receiver. Let's go ahead and move on to tight end, the best tight end on this list. The team that are the worst receiving core gets the best tight end, Kyle Pitts, number one. Then I'll say TJ Hawkinson at number two on the Lions. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and say the Seahawks with Noah Fant at three. Then I will go ahead and say the Bears at four with Cole Komet, who's solid. He's serviceable. And then at number five, I'll say the Jets. They've got all decent tight ends. It's kind of like tight end by committee, Tyler Conklin, guys like that. Um, then I will say uh, six will be um, the Texans, Brevin Jordan. Then the Giants with Daniel Bellinger, and then Panthers with Tommy Tremble. All right? You want to switch those three around, you can. None of those guys are great. All right, offensive line and defense. So I'm going to say the best offensive line here is the Detroit Lions at number one. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and say the Jets have the second best offensive line here. I know they lost Mekhi Becton, but I still believe that. Then I will say the Giants have the third best offensive line. Then after that, we will go ahead and go with the Texans at four. And then at five, we'll go ahead and go with the Panthers. And then at six, we'll go ahead and go with the Falcons. And then at seven, we'll go with the Bears. And then finally, eight, I think the worst offensive line football are the Seattle Seahawks, okay? And then here we go, defense. I will go ahead and say that the best defense on this list is probably uh, the Jets, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and say the Giants defense is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, then I'll go ahead and say the Panthers defense at three. Uh, then I will go ahead and say the Lions defense at four. And then we'll go ahead and say the Bears defense at five. Seahawks defense at six. Texans defense at seven. And then here we go, Falcons defense worse in football at eight. All right, so there we go. I know the numbers are kind of sloppy here in terms of aligning. So we've got all of the numbers here, Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate here. So work with me here, people. We're going to calculate. And how it's going to work is because the lowest number, the lower the number, the better the rating, whoever finishes here with the lowest is the best team. The higher the number, the worse are the team. All right? So you'll understand here. All right, folks. Here we are. I basically went ahead and calculated all these numbers for you here. So it's just straight up adding the numbers across the line. I know things got a little slanted here, but work with me. So basically... Remember I told you, the lower the number, the better the team. So the lowest number here, the best team on this list, I would say are the Detroit Lions here at 17. Then after that, the Jets at 2. And then after that, 
23, you would say the Panthers are at three. And then after that, you would say the Giants at four. And then after that, the Bears at five. And then six would be the Seahawks. And then seven would be the Texans. And eight would be the Falcons. Okay, so there you have it. All right, all of the teams ranked here. So the Bears are not, NOT not, the worst team in football. That would happen to be the Atlanta Falcons. And I showed you all the reasons why. Okay? So they are teams worse than the Bears. They are the fifth worst, you can say, according to this. But they are not the worst team in football. And they're comparable to these other teams. So I wanted to just break it down in an objective way where it wasn't just like my opinion. This is me breaking it down based off of what most people kind of would, would say in terms of comparing the positions and comparing the roster and everything so hopefully that answers the question to the national media the bears are not the worst team in football it is in fact the atlanta falcons let me know what you guys think leave a comment down below as always thanks for watching